It's a piece of honeysuckle. It comes to us from Tad Jenkins in Wyoming, and he wants me to turn it. <laughs> Tad's a joker. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy. Well, there you have it. I, it's a honeysuckle root, and Tad found it in a pile ready to be burned, and he pulled it out of there and he sent it to me here in Washington State and I'm gonna try and do something with it. First of all I had to uh, pressure wash it. I've had it for a couple of months waiting for the weather to get good enough to pressure wash it and then I let it set out in the hot sun for about three days to dry out and I think it's good to go that way. Uh, I just just now pulled these two rocks out of there. Actually the little one is just part of a bigger one. It just broke off. I couldn't get it all out of there so I suppose we're going to have some rocks flinging here and there and everywhere. The piece is about 16, or actually about 17, 17 wide, about 12 inches this way, about 8 inches deep. It's got a cool look in what will be the bottom. And you can see how the branches from the honeysuckle root came up. This thing is heavy. so. It I'm struggling here to show it to you. Trying to figure out how to mount it. I've spent quite a bit of time with this piece messing around. So that's going to be the inside obviously because it's already an inside bowl shape and that's already an outside bowl shape. I'm going to have to cut away with a chisel a lot of this. This is, maybe you can hear it, it's kind of rotten anyway. And then maybe some of this with a chisel so that I can get, get something down inside there. Whew, this thing is heavy. I'm going to set it down. Oh yeah, there's a, a good size crack right here. Now I put some medium CA in this crack. It probably didn't do any good. Maybe maybe here at the thin part it did some good, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to stay together or if we're going to get it turned or what, but we're sure going to give it our best effort. So I'm going to spend some time with a chisel cutting out some of these so that I can get this, get my chuck inside here somewhere with some sort of driving mechanism. I don't know what yet. I'm going to spend some time doing that and I'll be back and you'll see it on the lathe probably, I hope. So I know you won't be able to see much here because I have to see. I'll, I'll see what I can do, I don't know. Anyway, so now that that drive center, whoa, it's going to go into that hole, we hope. And still have room enough that the top edge of this bowl doesn't uh, hit anything on the headstock. Well, wouldn't you know, it hits the uh, magnetic light base. Oh boy. Okay, well, I'm going to be messing around with this for a while, and I'll bring you back when I figure it out. Tuffy Marginez to the rescue. Yes, Tuffy, I did think of this earlier, but for some reason or other I thought it wouldn't work. But now I think it will work, because the way I was doing it was not going to work anyway. So Tuffy made this for me uh, quite some time ago, months ago, maybe close to a year ago. And the idea here is this long rod, this threaded rod, goes all the way through my headstock, through the chuck, through the headstock. And then this cone uh, connects on the other end where you can't see over, over that way. And the cool part about this, well there's a lot of cool parts about it, it's so well made. You know, Tuffy's a machinist. So you just take the cone off there, open up the chuck jaws, thread the rod through, open the chuck jaws wide enough to get a grip on this thing, like that. We'll just leave that loose for now. Now I'm going to take the cone and go over here to the other end and thread it back on. And then there's a spacer and a nut that goes on after that. But this will pull it up tight into the chuck jaws, and then I can tighten my chuck jaws on that. It's made of aluminum, I guess. Looks like aluminum to me. What a nice job. Look at, look at the detail. The knurling on here. The set screws to hold the uh, woodworm screw in place. Now I'm going to lock my spindle, tighten up that cone nice and tight. And then I'll thread on the spacer and the nut and that'll secure it even more. Well, we'll spin it up and see if it's running true. Oh, of course it is. Tuffy made it, didn't he? Perfectly true. Now I just need to drill a hole in the center of that uh, 
what I was going to use for my four prong drive center. I just need to drill a hole, five sixteenths inch hole for this three eighths inch woodworm screw. And look what it does here. It gives me all this length, which gets it away from the headstock. So now, now we've got all this clearance. Ooh, nice job, nice job, Tuffy. Now I've drilled my hole for this to thread onto. Whoa, it turns. Not fast, about 300 RPM. It's mounted very securely. The screw grabbed the hold really well there in the bottom. I do have tailstock support, of course. This piece is big and heavy, and, <laughs> and it's going to wait till tomorrow because I am done for. This took me about three hours today messing around, cleaning up the inside enough to get it mounted, drilling holes, mounting up Tuffy's gizmo. So, uh, see you tomorrow. I did sharpen my 5 8 inch bowl gouge up to where it's razor sharp. I'm going to wear a glove, mask, and face shield on. Well, you know, I, I am going to come down here and start working on the bottom. I'm nowhere near done with the side, but I don't know what done is until I, I get a bottom on here, maybe a tenon, and get an idea of where my side can start. So I'll get set up for that. Gotta love that blue. We'll mark out for the tenon. Okay, I sized the tenon and now the chuck fits on there nicely. So now we have this big old wide bottom we need to get rid of. So I'll start working on the side here again and come in here about to this point. Time for sanding. Well, before we get going on the sanding, I wanted to show you, in case you ever get the opportunity to turn a root ball, beware that there can be rocks, pebbles. There's more down in there. Over here. Here. Right there. They're just all over the place. There's another one up here. I don't think you can see it. It's kind of on the inside, but... They're just all over. Normally you want to pop them out of there, and I did pop out a few. If they feel like they're well held, I'm going to go ahead and leave them. 
that's just part of where it came from you know so just something to be aware of they could be projectiles I suppose I'm gonna start the sanding with my sandal flex and this is 180 grit and I'll sand everything that isn't turned all of these natural areas here and there's plenty of them all of that all of this there's a rock buried deep in there and that rock is the color of the blue in this in the wood so I'm wondering if it's uh, something that was in the ground you know some minerals in the ground that turn this blue or if it just has blue in it I don't know so I'll use this this is 180 grit and that's as fine as I will go on all of these natural areas when I'm done with that I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit in reverse at about 350 rpm and I'll show you how both of those things look as soon as I get my mask on So that's just going to take a good long time. This whole sanding job is going to take a, probably the rest of the day, would be my guess. And then like I said, it's the piece spinning in reverse at about 350. Well that part at least, at least looks easy. But it's still, you know, it's big. So it's going to take a while. So I'll see you back here in, I don't know, at least two hours, more likely three. And we'll put some finish or sanding sealer or something on there. See you in a bit. Well, I know what I'm hoping for with this piece. Let's see if we get it. Yeah, pretty much. I was hoping these, these darker areas would get even darker. And they are doing that. Now, what about the blue? How about the blue? Is that going to stand out even more we're about to find out no still just blue but nice blue this thing is just it's unwieldy because it's so uh, out of balance every time I let go of it it changes spots on me well this was a lot of work to sand as you might imagine and I, I just hope I just hope that we can get this done not today, not going to get it done today, but done. Because I don't know what to expect on the inside. I think a lot of the wood's going to be rotten in there. The bottom won't be. So I, I don't want my hard work to go to waste, you know. I don't want it to split apart on me. We've still got that nice big crack there. And then we've got this crack over here that comes up here quite a ways. So it's kind of like this whole section from here to here could could possibly break out of there I don't think so I don't think so but could and I'm gonna have to do a whole lot of brushing in all these other areas but I do know what's for dinner to reward myself for my hard hard work having ribeye and homemade curly fries yes I have a an electric curly fry cutter love me some curly fries I hope the rocks that are still in there take a nice shine. They'll look like jewelry. Okay, that's all I'm gonna show you. I'll try and get two coats of this on today. Maybe one coat of shellac and then probably a coat of shellac tomorrow. And then we'll turn it around and start working on the inside. So, see you tomorrow. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm not looking forward to this, but I just hope it works out because it's, the outside is terrific. You can see I've installed a block of wood here just for stability. I have a lot of faith in the tenon that I put on down there, but just for stability while I'm working the major part of this. I'm hoping that I'll find some solid wood somewhere in here, you know, so that we get, get at least some finished wood along with some of the rot. I've done bowls before where I didn't turn the outside and they looked fine, but not turning the inside doesn't seem like an option to me. I can only turn at 340 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Wow.
Well, how much do I trust that tenon? Quite a bit. I just can't work with the tailstock here. We'll see what that gets us. <laughs> this wood doesn't seem like it's that hard the bottom turned really easily and nicely clean as could be super simple so that should tell us the wood isn't that hard but i don't know maybe it's the rocks in there i don't see any right now both of these gouges were sharp when i started and now they're not i hate to go to carbide well i changed my lathe over to uh, low range so it'll give me more torque and I'm going to try this square carbide cutter. I don't know that I've ever used it before. I don't think so. It's going to be very aggressive, but I think the round cutter wouldn't be aggressive enough. I'm just going to poke this in there and see what happens. Oh my gosh. Well, it's a whole lot easier. Not very artsy, but we're getting where we're going, I guess. Are you starting to see the potential? God, I hope so. <laughs> it's got to be there, doesn't it? Yeah, we're, we're just about out as far as we want to go. I know that's thick walls. That's just the way it is with this kind of thing. I'm looking at that crack, seeing if it's spreading any, and it's not. And the other one seems to be holding. It's right here. Now, I haven't talked much about the bottom. And right there, we're about an inch and a quarter. Okay, I'm going to get my mask and face shield back on. We'll get back at it. I really don't want to lose that rock. That's right there, right on the edge. So that's as far out as I'm going. I suppose that's silly to some of you. You want to keep the rock? Yeah, it's jewelry. So I'm going to go in here and start working on the bottom.
Now I'm going to check myself. Looks like we're getting near that bottom. Which is a good thing because I'm at about three-eighths of an inch. Maybe a half an inch. I've never experienced the maximum length of my tool rest before, I guess. I can't get any closer because it wants to hit the banjo. See the edge of the bowl wants to hit the banjo right here. I'm only an eighth of an inch away from it, so I can't get any closer with my tool rest. And that's kind of a long reach out there. But we'll get there, I think. To the bottom. I'm just, I'm just double checking. Oh man, about three sixteenths of an inch. Three sixteenths of an inch on a bowl this size. Jeez. Nice going, Phil. Well, we're there though. All right, I'm gonna switch to a round cutter. I guess I'll just stick with carbide. I'm gonna switch to a round cutter and see if I can't smooth out some of this mess. My gosh, I can't believe we're getting there. I cannot believe it, seriously. I was pretty sure it was gonna blow apart. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. I'll be back. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll try my negative rake scraper on the sides here. Yeah, that's about as good as I can get it. Okay, oh, time for sanding. That's my 60 grit gouge or 60 grit scraper, whatever you want to call it. I've got I've got some pretty rough surfaces here, and that's what's going to take it out. And I might have to hold it still. And do that way to get some of it. But it'll get it. And once I get that smoothed out, then I'll switch to my 2 inch disc at 80 grit. And do a whole lot of that up through 400. So this is going to be about a four day bowl I think. We're on day three now. I hope to get it sanded today and get at least one coat of sanding sealer on there. I'm tired boys and girls. <laughs> this has been a chore. So that's what I'm going to be doing for quite some time. Oh and, and then uh, when that's all done I will take my Sandoflex at 180 grit not 60 grit and I'll do all the unturned parts and get some finish on there and I'll bring you back later. Well that was fun. Not. It was not fun. Don't believe a word of it. My gosh this was a lot of work. We're gonna be going on five days tomorrow because I won't get this done today. It's a rainy cool day and it's just not gonna dry quickly. And I figured out part of my problem. If I run my finger across here across this crack it just goes smoothly this way but it stops coming that way 
So this has either shrunk up or just because of the big crack and then being thinned out, it's shifted. But this, this part here is into the bowl further than this is. I don't know what to think of this piece. It's a lot of dang work. I guess it's a statement piece. I guess it sets on a, an entry table and says, we, we have this big ugly bowl in our house. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it's ugly at all. I think it's quite nice. But some of you folks might think it's ugly. Let me know about that for sure. Well, most of this is gonna have to be brushed, isn't it? So as on the outside, I'm applying sanding sealer and I've got some of that sanding sealer in this little can and my brush and I'll just brush it into all these areas that I can't reach with a rag. Everything is smooth. It may not look like it, but it is. Feels good when you run your hand over it, thanks to the sandal flex. I don't know what I'd do without that thing. Well, I wouldn't do this kind of work, I can tell you that. So I'll be working on this a while. Looks like two coats of this sanding sealer and then a couple coats of shellac. And that's going to take the rest of the day and I'll bring you back tomorrow and we'll take the tenon off. I hope that doesn't present any issues. I don't expect it to. Well, except mounting. I think we're going to rely on Tuffy's invention for that as well. See you tomorrow. I've reinstalled Tuffy's extension here. So I'm going to put a piece of non-slip material over that. Then I'll bring up the bowl. This very heavy, awkward to hold bowl. Bring up the tailstock. Still have my center hole there for reference. So that'll help me get it centered. Apply a little pressure. Bring up the tool rest. I'm going to grab a half inch standard grind bowl gouge. Turn the speed up to about about 300, it's going to take a while, and commence to removing that tenon. Now that's pretty small, so now I want to raise my tool rest up and get a little bit closer. And I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge. And just keep working it away. Now if I was smart I'd quit about here and take it over to the workbench and finish it. But no one ever accused me of being smart. So I'm going to turn the speed down to about 150 and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Lots of pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning or breaks, we'll know we're through. Like that. Now I'll just take this over to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. I'm sure they're quite dramatic. If you'd share the video, wow, that would be totally cool. I'd really appreciate that. Well, here it is. One honeysuckle root ball bowl in the books. Isn't that spectacular? I, I, I can't imagine. I, I, I need to see the before and after shots myself. I remember that was just all rotten in there. And it's difficult for me to see, looking in the monitor here, where the rocks are. Maybe you can see them somewhere there. There's, uh, I think there's three of them. Where'd it go? Oh yeah, right there. One of them's right there. It's kind of the same color as the wood so it's hard to see but it's right there and the other one right here one here and then there's a little one next to it and I thought I saw blue rocks didn't I see blue rocks which I said gave us that blue color on the outside boy this thing is heavy there's the bottom all finished up I know this is just awkward as heck you can't follow what I'm doing here because I can't I can't <laughs> move the piece around comfortably let me try this rest it on my hand and turn it around I don't know it's so big it probably doesn't even fit on your screen 
Well, it was quite a chore. I'm really glad it's done. I really do like it. I hope you folks like it. Tad Jenkins from Wyoming sent this to us for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I enjoy reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.